What is up, everybody? This is Recap Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And we are covering off American Horror Story Season 9. Oh my god. And it's American Horror Story 1984. 1984. And the first episode premiered uh, yesterday. And uh, yeah, this super season. Super excited for this one. Super excited for this season. Um, I'm just really. This, this season, what we're going to do is change it up a bit. I think that doing the full, full podcast was a little bit much for us. So we're going to take it down a notch. And we definitely felt like I think people, like you guys, our listeners, were coming already having watched the episode. Yeah. And so kind of providing a recap was a little, you know, it's been, you guys, you guys know what happened. Yeah. So we really want to break down the roundups, our best moments, our MVPs, and those things of the episode. Yeah. And hopefully you guys can comment below and join our conversation so we can hear what you guys are thinking of the season and the episode and right. we still want that commentary but it's just going to be like a shortened version of, It'll be of a the short, episode a short version of the same thing um and if you guys want more of this for american horror story then yeah by all means we'll definitely change it up if you need us to but yeah so let's start um first Overall. of all before before we get into the round cu- roundups round cups we're gonna just talk about the like, 80s the 80s, <laughs> the episode, the premiere. Yeah. What did you think of how it? No, set I up? definitely loved it. I will say I loved the intro, the new uh, oh seasons so intro. Cool. Yeah. So freaking cool! I just love the 80s. I think the 80s are coming back now, and like everyone's you know wearing neon and like yeah. short shorts, high socks, whatever. I love it. Um, love the beginning. I do feel like it was a little anticlimactic towards the end. Okay. Um, but definitely Why did excited. You think that? I just like it got so lit in the middle, and then at yeah. the end it was like, oh, okay, like. That's it. Whatever. But I definitely <laughs> think I'm excited for like the next episode. Like it's going to be. For sure. It's going to get crazy. The thing that I will say about this season so far is I feel like everything's been encapsulated in the one episode. Like I just feel like a lot of it was done in one like this one episode. So much happened. Like they they set you up to go to the camp, obviously. Right. But like Emma Roberts gets attacked in the very first like 15 minutes of the of the episode and you're like or did she or did she? what do you mean oh god do you have any theory you already have theories mm, maybe oh, a little bit really good i haven't read anything about this so if you're gonna no it, yeah no i it. haven't i don't know anything i'm just guessing okay um i so the one thing that i will say is yes i think the whole ep, like the whole way that they set it up was very exciting it's super super different in my eyes from anything that else, else that we've seen from american horror story um, I have to say, I love when you say different. It is different because we we're so used to seeing Emma Roberts' character be like this, yeah. this sassy, like rich bitch, and then Billy Lord's character, especially last season, was like this really like quiet, Timid. like I don't know, like I'm the witch, like yeah. yeah, yeah. Now she's like opposite. Yeah, full opposite. Emma Roberts' character is like quiet, and Billy Lord's character is like this like hornified like girl. Yeah, yeah, and it's so exciting. It's it's just fun yeah, to watch them yeah, all. But I like it. I yeah, I I will say that I just feel like. It's set up almost like a classic horror movie, and I'm just waiting for everybody to die at this point. Oh, 100%. Right? Like, 100%. The way that they set it up is like literally a murderer like exits a mental institution and now is going to go back to the camp to kill off the person that he had survived. It's very like Scream meets like, it's every story. It line. is. It's, it's like, it's, it's, I know what you did last summer. It's Michael Myers. Like when she's it's, running away it's Halloween, from it's, the murder and like she keeps falling. Oh no, when she was like in the woods and yeah. she keeps falling. I'm like, this is like making fun of like every All Jennifer those, Love, yeah. uh, what's her face? <laughs> Jennifer Love Je- Hewitt, yeah. Um, the one from like I know what she did. Like, yeah, yeah, like she keeps falling. Like, why do you keep falling, man? Like Just run properly. The shit's slippery. But like, also, like he has a limp, and he was like running to her, basically. But anyway, I I think it's really great. I think it's a lot of fun to watch. I was scared watching it by myself yesterday. Like it was terrifying. But um, I just don't know where they're gonna go. But you know what? After. Just enjoy the ride. I think this is one okay. of those seasons where like you don't, you can't predict. Uh, it's probably not gonna make sense. Yeah. You got to kind of just go with the just vibe, go, with, go with the theme and like enjoy it because, you know, he's going to give you a good season. So I mean, I hope so. I hope yeah, so. it'll be fun. It's like 80s and there's like I big do, dicks everywhere. And I, like, it's like cool. Oh, yeah, very much. So that's very true. Because <laughs> I know you want to get to that <laughs> oh, topic. Zale, let's get into that right now. No. Um, yeah. So quickly, we can talk about them. There's Brooke, who's played by Emma Roberts. There's Chet, who's played by Gus Kenworthy, um, who's an actual Olympian. Like he's, he's oh. like legit. Um, and he came out. I forgot out about that. Yeah, I forgot was, about that. That's yeah, why I was like, that's there. so random, the storyline. And then there is Ray, who's a DeMar DeRozan's character. Not DeMar DeRozan! DeMar DeRozan! <laughs> <laughs> he does have it. <laughs> Who are you 
you even trying to say? DeMar DeRozan? <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> Who are you trying to say, though? I'm talking about the guy from Dear White People. But why'd you say DeMar DeRozan? Because his name is... Oh, it sounds like that. Deron Horton. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's his actual name, guys. Don't come for me. Oh my god. DeMar DeRozan is a Toronto <laughs> or we used to be a Toronto Raptor. <laughs> Sorry. Your sports references are always coming in at the wrong time. <laughs> the worst times. Sorry, okay. Okay. Ray's played by Duran Horton. Right. Love him. Uh, Dear yeah, white people. I think he was so great. Cute. And Loved he's him. so cute in this role. I was like, ooh, he's sexy. Because he plays like such a nerd in Dear White People. But like a cute nerd. When you Lino. see him in this, you're like, ooh, he's like a sexy jock. Yeah. But not um, really a jock. I mean, <laughs> he's still kind of nerdy, I'm but kind cute. kind of into it. But yeah. Uh, then there's Montana, who's played by Billy Montana. Lord. What a name. Fucking love her. I just, like, whatever Billy so does much, and this says, look. I'm all about her The life. eyeliner, the, the blonde hair. The it's like leopard her. print, yeah, yeah. like everything. Um, then we have Xavier, who's played by Cody Fern, who I, my bad, thought that he was like a gay character. Apparently he's, he, he's Yo, not. it's interesting. Like, I was like waiting for it, for him to like go to the guy. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, does he have feelings for, what's her face? Brooke? Like Montana? Like, I thought or there Montana. was like some situation But maybe there. he's like, yeah, I don't but know. But then he gets a phone call at some yeah, point Yeah, yeah, I definitely think like something about, something's something like happening. Yeah, gay? yeah, yeah. Because like, don't, don't forget, like it's the '80s, right? So True. different time. Maybe he's just trying to like find himself, figure out his life. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So there's Xavier played by Cody Fern, and he's just like kind of like a hot shot kind of like he's the, he's all. the instructor of the class. Yeah, but and like, he's like, let's group, go to camp. I think he thinks he's like the the shit. Like yeah. he thinks he's cool. Um, then there is Margaret, who's like the leader of the camp, played by Mar- Leslie Grossman. So and- she owns the camp because her husband died and she got a ton of money. So she rebought the camp. Right. Yeah. And everybody that he's, she talks about in that storyline is a real person. So it was someone who like went to like jail for fraud or embezzlement or something. It was something oh. that happened like in, in the real 1980s. Life? Yeah, oh, in real life. oh, okay. Everything's rooted in real life in some regard. And then finally we have Trevor, who's played by my man... Matthew Morrison. I mean, I feel like I'm more into his like dick than anything else. Like him as an actor, okay. he's okay. Question but, like, for you and our listeners: this, What was the fixation on that? Like, I wonder who wrote his character, and they were like, "Let's give this guy a big dick." You know what it is? I think it's just like that vibe, that type, like, that, that t- character style. And yeah, I feel like I feel like every SNL skit, everybody that's ever done like '80s has always had like that hot jock, like short shorts instructor that you want to fuck, and you end up having Dim sex print. with him at the end of the summer. But like, yeah, they definitely push it to the edge. Like he literally walks in with a dildo in his pants, basically. Like that's like <laughs> that's literally what like a prosthetic dick, just like kind of flapping everywhere. And they even comment about it. Like each of the characters is like, "Yo, you have a big dick." Well, Montana's like, "Oh my god, I remember your little elephant like, dick." Like elephant dick, little elephant dick. That's like a anyway oxymoron. <laughs> oxymoron. So, so that's the cast. So that's the cast. Uh, let's just get into our recap roundups. Yeah. Recap roundups. Best moment. Best moment? Uh, best moment. You go first. We did have the the same best moment. Yeah, when we were but, writing them down, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, and the same one. I think it has to go to the montage in the beginning with like the 80s music and like the hip thrust and like oh short God. shorts and like everyone just looked so good. The looks that like Gus Kenworthy was giving Emma Roberts' yeah, character. Yeah, is that like his Chet. name? He's so yeah. hot. I love him. Chet, he's gay in real life. <laughs> You're like, cool. cool. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I thought he was a terrible actor. But anyway. He's so hot. He, I mean, his abs are like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that scene where like you see her thrusting, like Brooke thrusting. She's like, and ooh, then, okay, I like that guy. Like, he's thrusting beside her. I was like, okay. Like very sexy scene. I was like, But the I music wanna... and the Music's colors, the dancing. It was very... Uh, Stranger Things too because Stranger Things did the same thing True. this season with yeah, that with like the, the aer- uh, what, aerobics class or whatever. Yeah, um, so I like that. That was probably the best moment of the episode for me. Yeah. Okay, so my best moment if that's what you're going to take I'll say my best moment's going to be the full chase scene. I think that was I think that was pretty terrifying to watch. Yeah. It's not, It wasn't my best moment in terms of like I loved watching it but I was like in terms of how they set it up and how they have her kind of run through it and it did make me like Brooks Brooks character sure. a little bit more um but I, I was like, like are they gonna kill her off in like the I first know, I was episode like, Damn, Emma Roberts like you got like some short-term fucking contract but yeah so I like that scene that was my favorite WTF, WTF moment, moment. 
What was your WTF moment? WTF moment, I think, uh, for me, the most shocking was like when Margaret was like, my ear! Oh. And like she lifts her, I'm like, what? <laughs> she lifts her ear. Like, how did I not see that coming? True. Duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it was also very shocking in that moment. I'm like, oh my God, her yeah. ears like cut off. And she was the girl in like the, the flashback. In the flashback, with, which we What did you think of very, that moment? The, her ear missing and like, ear. yeah. I think. I love the way that it was set up. I think, like, to your point, the way that they set up all these characters, it's very typical. Like, I feel yeah. like the survivor of the last murder and the guy's is coming back for revenge. Ca- yeah, yeah. And, like, I think that, like, the way they set up is very templated. But, like, to see the gag, I was, I definitely was like, first of all, ew, is that what, like, an ear looks like when you're we're and, missing a ear? Yeah. And also, yeah. secondly, like, I was like, Oh god. I love how they wrapped her character in like this really like born again Christian vibe where yeah. she's like, Thank thanks to God I saw the light and like I didn't even flinch when he cut off my ear. Like it was such a weird dramatic story <laughs> yeah. attached to it all that yeah. I was like, Yeah. Of course. It was shocking. I'll be very excited to see what they do with her character. Like is she gonna be like this badass survivor chick or is she gonna be like I'm a Bible thumper, but also I'm a survivor, so I'm gonna die in the first episode. Like, not the first, but maybe she'll die soon. I just I don't know. MB's just like shaking her head. So I'm like, what do you know, girl? All right. Let, my WTF moment is going to go to the attack from um, Oh the my Night God. Stalker, yeah. Richard Ramirez. So it is oh, a real character. Richard Ramirez. Yeah. So it's actually him. And I think around that time, of, like in he 1984, that is what was happening. Yeah. So they are taking that from, like, they're taking a page from history in that regard. But, like, I'm WTFing it for two reasons. One reason, because the actual scene was, like, so random and troubling. Yeah, it, Especially after, like, she says it at the gym. She's like, more people get attacked because, like, they keep their windows open and da 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 I'm like, you left your window open and you got attacked. I'm sure that's not how he came in. I don't whatever. No, you're Doesn't right. Because I was wondering what the timing of it was. I was like, she was just talking just about this. Just talking about it. And, and you're telling me it just happened to her? Like, and she survived survived an attack from yeah. the Night Stalker. Like, there's not many people that can say that because he was a rapist, a murderer, a burglar. I almost don't believe it. That's, like, what I, that's what I took from that moment. Exactly. And I was like, and that kind of led me to, like, questioning her as a character. But we'll get into that in a second because I also want to bring it all the way back to the end of the episode where, like, this guy, Richard Ramirez, he calls her. is... In, oh, he's, like, in he's there. at the camp. He's at the camp. So, like, he's watching her in the woods. So now there's two murderers in one place. And I'm like, what bananas are they going to get yeah. into here? I feel like it was very, like, why are we doing this? Why did they have to have that extra layer? Like, it's very unlike AHS to, like, show you all their cards in the very beginning. Like... I don't know where they're going to go with any of this. It's like, is she going to be a witch? Like, <laughs> like that's the only thing it's, that I could think of. It's not of. that they're showing their cards, in my opinion, but I think that it was almost, like, too good to be true. Like, you're right. If they had just edited it where, like, it started off with her getting attacked by him, and then she goes to the yeah. gym, and then she's like, I was just attacked, but I'm going to go to this camp to escape, that would have just flowed better. Agreed. It kind of felt like he was fake, and it was like, this can't yeah. be happening, girl. And Come then they, on. like, put her, like, put him in and that And then he scene. goes to the camp? And then he goes to the camp because he, he find wants her? to kill her that bad. Badly. Yeah, I'm like, uh, it's it's Richard Ramirez. I think he has like enough people to like to kill, kill and yeah. like like burglar like anywhere else in L.A. But yeah, I just think that that was kind of weird to me. Um, but before we move on, let's just, let's move on to our MVPs because then we can talk about her then. MVP. MVP. So who's your MVP? My MVP is going to go to Margaret. Uh, I think Leslie Grossman is like an amazing actress, first of all. She's so (laughs) freaking entertaining and fun to watch. She is fun to watch. And a very different character this season. I just think she has a lot up her sleeve that we aren't going to be expecting. You know, she's missing an ear. That kid was missing an ear, but but the jingle guy was still in jail. So who cut off his ear? Like... She's just shady to me. You know what I mean? And like, she sounds like a born again Christian. So I'm a little like, why? (laughs) Like, why are you so against like Like kids having sex? Like, why are you so extremist? And like, that is throwing me off a little bit. I mean, I guess it was because like she saw, she thought she saw Jesus, but she basically saw But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't trust her. I just don't trust her. Uh, Okay. Something's off. That's fair. I think that right now we're allowed to. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) and he's into the jokes tonight. Um, my MVP is going to another girl who I think is really cool, but also potentially sketchy, Brooke. Yeah, yeah. I loved her character. And like, to your point, I think that they, I love the fact that they gave Emma Roberts a not- Very different role. A completely different role. And she's not playing it 
typically like Mm -hmm. i think that there's a typical way to play the timid quiet like you know nev campbell character i think she does a really good job at that like i think that there's a way to like skirt it where it's like i'm a good girl like i I don't do anything wrong like she's not doing it to that level so i think that she's still like a grounded real character like i believe her basically and i think that emma roberts does a good job playing her the one thing i will say about brooke right now is there's a big question mark in terms of like because she has that setup where she's like the new one in the group and like this is what happened to her and according to her this is her story right the night stalker came and followed her to the camp do we even believe her as the you know as the viewer the audience, yeah. are we believing her just because we saw this scene like is fu- basically is Ryan Murphy fucking all of us up right mm-hmm. now you know and i think the one thing and i wanted to actually ask you this is um you know i don't i guess it's a 19 it's not a 1980s thing but i know in the 1990s a lot of the films that they did the main crew had one member in it that was like the secret murderer mm-hmm. so do you think that they're gonna try that yeah, for 1984 I think so. or do you think that it's I think like so. not gonna be a part of the story i think so and would it be brooke would it be your girl margaret like, i definitely think something's up with brooke i just don't know what yet like is she good or is she evil like, i just there's something there's something off I do with think that story is, i will say i do think it's weird that she's very like attentive to people's like medical injuries like she like ran into the rain to like help that guy out and she knew what she was doing and i'm like i wouldn't know what to do like i don't care but i mean i guess i'm a guy i don't really give a shit about that kind of stuff but i just well she did say she was gonna be a veterinarian assistant so she um, knows that ish okay sorry guys i missed that part (laughs) but thanks mb for catching me because they made fun of her for it um yeah it'll be interesting to see what they do with the characters lvp Who's your LVP? My LVP is going to go to Mr. Jingles because Ew. I feel like they hyped him up so much. Yeah. And I kind of wanted him to like remain this like hidden, shadowy, big, dark figure. But like we saw his face. Yeah. We saw him escape. Like it, he wasn't actually that scary at the end. Like he was, he killed that guy. But yeah. like, I don't know. I wasn't, I thought they would make us wait longer to like see him. That, that's what I mean. I feel like everything happened this one episode and you're like, where are they going to go from here? But here's the thing. He might, he must not be the main like villain. Cause like there has to be something more than him. Exactly. Obviously. But that's what I'm trying to say is like, if this is our story and this is what they're giving us in the first episode is every episode or every two episodes going to like change decades. Like what are they going to do? They're not going to do that. No, they because won't it's called 1984. Yeah. But I, I just, I don't know what they're going to do. You already know. It's, it feels like the first ha- like 20 minutes of a movie. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, 20 minutes is already like a quarter way through the Don't forget, the they movie. can do flashbacks into each person's character yeah, and their yeah. psyche and their life. Because like, they like they, they love doing that kind that of shit, shit, you know? Yeah, that's true. But I don't know like if I'd want that, you know what I mean? I'd rather them do an anthology series where like people keep dying at this one camp and it keeps reopening for stupid reasons and, you know, like there's a new killer, but... I don't know how they would do that in one year. Like no one's. I'd love if like they went back to like 1972 or whatever that year was. Right, and they probably will. You're probably right. They like to do flashbacks. They like to do like flash forward. So we're probably gonna see a bit of that. But that's what I mean. I feel like the fact that they set it up, even in the trailer, they're like, it's gonna be the 80s, and Mr. Jingles is the main killer. He escaped from mental institute, and also there's this Night Stalker storyline. So yes there's two murderers in one place i feel like it's an overload for the first episode because where do you go from there? i trust them though i trust they're gonna know what they're doing girl i mean roanoke i'm just gonna say that um my lvp is gonna go to chet because i think that he i don't know he was a douchebag this episode for one i think i feel like he has like pain and like trauma and like i want to know him i mean i think ray said it perfectly he's got roid rage like he's just angry that he didn't get into the olympics um i think you're just being blinded by his steel cut abs Mm -hmm. um and also like no offense to gus kenworthy yes you're a beautiful man and i'm sure you're you're the best of olympians but like don't quit your day job. Like, but you know I what I think it is? I think it, I feel like in it this, blows my mind. In this theme, though, like, yes. bad acting goes. So it's fine. Like, he <laughs> can get true. away with That's it. That's a good you point. Know? That's a good point. I do think that, like, I mean, as much as I appreciate Ryan Murphy bringing all this amazing television to our lives, um, I feel like he, like, sees one person. He's like, you're cool. You want to be on my show? And, like, doesn't necessarily mean that, yeah. like, you're a good actor. Yeah. You know? So we'll see. I don't think that it always translates is what I'm trying to say. 
the, the best, best line. line. What was your best line? My best line is from Margaret's character when she's like showing everyone like the campgrounds. Yeah. And she's like, girls are red, boys are blue, don't even try to make purple. <laughs> What did like, she say that? She, she she's showing their like bunks, oh, like where their the bedding bunks. is. And she's like, girls are in the red, whatever, and uh, boys are in the blue, and don't make purple because she like, don't have sex. Uh, I was like, oh my god. Got it. Um, I'm gonna take this one. It's uh our girl Montana, <laughs> Hannah Montana, and she's talking about Trevor's big dick, and she says. That thing was flopping around like a baby elephant's trunk. You sound like her. You I did know. Good. Did I do it good? Yeah, yeah. Comment below if I, did, if I nailed and that. And she has that like shocked look. She's like, look, you guys can't see my face, but she's yeah. like, Ugh. yeah. Like, she can't believe it. <laughs> she's like, I'm all about that dick. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm really excited about the season. I'm excited. I think it's going to be good. You're right. Like Roanoke was really bad, but I don't think that like it's going to get that bad. I think this is going to be entertaining still because Roanoke was just like, there was nothing appealing about it. Like the story was shit and the visuals were sick, Uh, like bad. But like, at least this one's like fun, like colorful. The music's on point. So even if the story is bad, we're left with some like cool visuals. Possible. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, let us know what you guys think in the comments yes let us know what you guys thought about this uh, if you guys like our new format for this season um, definitely comment below I just want to take the time to thank our patrons of the episode in our rewinder squad we got white and then we got our lit rewinders thank you Sarge, Soleil, Serena Tina and Jessica and Kate and our mommy rewinders thank you to Grace Becca, Sarah and Tamala if you would like to join our Patreon family, check us out at patreon.com slash recap underscore rewind. And if you join, you'll get access to all the things Recap Rewind, including exclusive contests, content, and updates. Um, so check us out. Finally, 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 make sure you guys check us out on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, Speaker, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iTunes, Facebook. We're literally everywhere. So make sure you guys stay connected to join the conversation. Like, subscribe, follow, review, comment, tell all your friends about us just to stay engaged with Recap Rewind. And that's it from us. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.